has the prophetic theme, enough is enough. Say me, enough is enough. Can you arrest the devil with that word right now? One more time, can you see it boldly right now? No, I would like to say it's understanding. When you say enough is enough, what are those things that you don't want to see again? What are the marks of Egypt? What are the things contrary to the will of God? Now, we have been told prior to now that we should write them out. In case you have your list, bring them and sit on them. Put them under your chair and sit on them. Because that issue will now come under your feet. Amen. I said those issues of concern, even in this Sabbath, they shall be turned to testimony. Amen. So in case you have written your own, and in case you have not, you can write them in the course of the message. But if you have written your own, just put them where sit on them. So say, enough is enough of this matter. This matter, you are now under me. This matter, today marks your waterloo. Today marks the dawning of a new day. Every captivity, every pain, every unwanted situation, every issue of concern about your health, about your business, about your career, about your children, about your spouse, about your sibling, as far as your eyes can see, put it there. You cannot intimidate God with your needs. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. So don't pity God. As far as your eyes can see, today, those issues shall be turned to a testimony. Amen. If you agree, shout a stronger amen. amen. Now, the prophetic theme for the month is I am redeemed a wonder to my war. Can we say that together right now? That is, every child of God is redeemed a living wonder, an amazement, a spectacle, a blessing, not a body, an asset, not a liability, a person to be envied and not to be pitied. I am redeemed. As a wonder, not a wanderer. I am redeemed a victor, not a victim. I am redeemed for non-stop progress, not a victim of stagnation. I am redeemed that my mouth will be filled with laughter, not with depression. I am redeemed to be going forward when others are saying there's a casting down. And that's why our teaching series is captioned Operating in the Supernatural. And we're looking at part 2B in this service. Operating in the Supernatural. Living a life that is above human limitations. Living a superior life. A better life. Abundant life. Living the celestial life on this planet Earth. Living an heavenly life. You are not waiting to get to heaven to exhibit heaven. You are already manifesting heaven on your way to heaven. Amen. Everyone here will get to heaven. Amen. So we are not redeemed to be a suffer head before getting to heaven. Operating in the supernatural I'd like to begin by saying there are two types of human beings. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible talks about the natural man. Say me the natural man. So that means the opposite is also important. That means there are natural men and there are supernatural men. 
Not everybody you see is human. The natural man receiveth not the things of God. So if you have ever received anything from God, you are not natural. Because whatever is from above is above all. You can receive things from, a God, from God and be lost among men. The natural man receiveth not the things of God. So if you have received the gift of salvation, you are not natural. You are not a natural man. You are not a natural woman. You are not a natural teenager. You are not a natural worker. You are not a natural husband. You are not a natural wife. You are not a natural student. He said, if any man be in Christ, all things are passed away and all things are become new. Look at it critically. Second Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 18 now, the beginning of verse 18. He said, and all things, say me all things, all things concerning this new creature, they are of God, they are like God, they resemble God. And God is supernatural. That's why we say we are redeemed as a wonder. Not a wanderer. As a spectacle to be envied by men. No one under the sound of my voice shall be pitied by men. Amen. Whatever has kept anyone under captivity, under shame and reproach, as you are receiving this war, there's a turn around. Amen. Or if you are there, shout a stronger amen. amen. Hmm. Operating the supernatural. In John chapter 10, verse 37 and 38, Jesus said, if I do not the works of my father, if I am not operating like my father, because God doeth wonders, he does miracles without numbers. If I am not operating the supernatural, don't believe me. So, our Christianity, our redemption, we have lots of question marks if you are not manifesting the supernatural. If our life is average, if the things that happen to natural men happen to us, then there are question marks. Because inside every child of God is loaded supernatural virtues. In Luke 17, 21, the scripture says the kingdom of God is where? It's within the kingdom of God, the supernatural, the heavenly life. is loaded on the inside. So we are now to operate it in the physical. He said the whole creation is waiting for the manifestations, for the unleashing of the supernatural virtues embedded in the new creation. Inside you, as a child of God, is God himself. First John chapter 4, verse 4. He said, greater is he. That is what? Who is that person? It's God. God is here. So you can't have God on your inside and be a victim of natural circumstances. Inside the redeemed is Jesus Christ himself. He said, Christ in you the hope of glory. Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, resides on your insides. Christ, that doeth many miracles, John eleven forty seven, 47, resides on your inside. So, so, the one that does miracles without number, resides on my inside. I can't lack miracles. I can't be a victim of professional prophets. Others should be consulting me, not me consulting them. 
He said, I shall lay hands upon the sick. What will happen? That what called the call supernatural. You can't tell how it happens. We had a testimony. Somebody had prostate cancer. They said, I began to take communion. I take uh, anointing oil. And at the end of the day, they went to check it. It has gone back to sender. You can't explain it. Can you explain how bones grow in the womb of a person with a child? What makes a child, the sperm and the egg, there's nothing bony about them. That's what we call supernatural. He said, you can't tell, you can't explain. Inexplainable yet undeniable. That's what we call supernatural. That's what we call science. That's what we call wonders. And it's our ticket out of every unwanted situation. So inside the redeemed is the Holy Ghost. The fountain of the supernatural. John chapter 2, about 28, 29, 30. He said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. He said, and I will show signs and wonders. The fountain of the supernatural is on my inside. I am a walking miracle. Amen. You are a walking miracle. Amen. So no captivity is permitted. Every barrier, every captivity of life, they bow to a miracle. They bow to a sign. Even the worst of Egypt bow to a miracle. Remember the story? This one, chapter 28, and verse 6. The Bible says, God wrought signs and wonders. He brought them out by reason 26, sorry, Chapter 26, verse 8. He brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with signs and with wonders. That means without signs and wonders, every child of God will still be carrying the marks of Egypt. Every child of God will be a victim of affliction, of captivity, of stagnation, of oppression, of poverty, of sickness and fear. So understand the purpose of miracles. It is to terminate the afflictions of Egypt. So in this service today, every captivity shall be terminated. Amen. Every unwanted situation, they bow to a sign. Amen. And this is your day. Amen. Say, me, this is my day. Now, we are saying that miracles are no accidents. That the supernatural is not what you wait for. Living a life that is out of this world. Living your life as if Satan has died. Living a sickness-free life. Living a begging-free life. Living free of ups and downs. It's not what you wait for. It's what you provoke. So we are saying miracles are not accidental. They are the deliberate acts of God provoked by the faith of man. So to stand out and be a living wonder you don't sit down and fold your hand and say, I'm, a, I'm redeemed as a wonder. Where is your faith? He said, these signs shall follow them that do what? Your faith is required. My faith is required. If I will not be a victim of what happened to natural men, if I will not suffer what men suffer, Say my faith. my faith. We are familiar with that story of that lady with the issue of blood. Twelve years she was bleeding to death. In Luke chapter 8, verse 40 to 48. And Jesus said, thy faith has made the whole. Our faith. How can you say, just by touching the hem of his garment, a medical condition that has defied medical solutions stopped. 
inexplainable. Yet what? Undeniable. That's what they call supernatural. He said, the wind blow it where it listed. He said, you can see the signs of the wind, but you cannot tell. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You can't tell. If you can tell how things are happening for you, that is natural. If, they can, if you can tell how your finances are working, that's natural. So, supernatural means getting things done that you cannot explain how it has happened. So now, somebody's son was afflicted. Every midnight, you'll be crying. Can't sleep, losing weight, piling away to death. And the mother was coming to church. Every time there's communion, for instance, now, the woman said, according to her, she would dodge the communion. Because from her previous church, they have told her that if you are not perfect, you're going to take communion. Let me say this to you. Communion is not for perfect people. Communion is for imperfect people to take to become perfect. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, 21. He said, through the everlasting blood of the covenant, by that blood, verse 21, he said, it shall make you what? It shall make you perfect. So if there are imperfections, take the communion and there will be perfection. I thought you had seen him to that. So she was dodging the communion. And the sister said, have you given this your song, communion? He said, no, even with myself, I normally dodge it. I don't know whether some people are still dodging it here. And she administered the communion and the same day, the crying stopped. Amen. The same day, this child excreted human hair and ants. And that marked the end of the affliction. Amen. You can't tell the relationship between the ants, the hair, and the crying. You can't tell how the communion made it happen. But that affliction was terminated. That was called the supernatural. Inexplainable, yet undeniable. We are taking that supernatural meal today. So whatever is bringing about shame, pain, crying to anyone, by this meal today, it shall be overturned. Somebody was diagnosed in India with bone marrow cancer, spending lots of money every week. And online, partake of a communion like this, a miracle meal like this, supernatural meal like this. I'm saying this so that our faith can come alive because our faith is required to trigger the miraculous. We don't wait for it. We are not coming here to take church snacks. We are coming here to partake of a supernatural meal that would terminate every unwanted issue in our life today. Amen. So he took the communion online. Under 48 hours, all the symptoms of bone marrow cancer disappeared. Amen. And this man stood even after, one year after, to testify. Somebody here will testify today. Amen. Whatever has defied medical solution, either for yourself or for any family member, as you stand in faith and partake of this supernatural meal, there will be instant healing. Amen. Oh, I thought I would hear stronger. Amen. Amen. So, faith is required to release the supernatural. They are not accidental. Nobody succeeds by accident because no accident is a success. Have you seen a successful accident before? So nobody lives a life above the natural by accident. Our faith. Say my faith. My faith. Remember the story in Luke chapter 8 also? They were traveling and the scripture said there was the storm came and their life was in jeopardy. And the disciples cried out to Christ and Jesus said to them, verse 25, he said, where is your faith? 
Ask your neighbor, where's your faith? Turn to your neighbor, did you come to church with your faith today? Hope you are here with your faith right now. <laughs> so don't drop your faith at all. Everywhere you go, carry your faith. He said, where is your faith? That means if your faith is present, this issue is a non entity, not an issue. He said, what manner of man is this? It was a wonder. That even the winds and the water, they obey him. From this service today, everything will obey you. Amen. Whatever has been out of control will come under your control. Amen. Oh, if you are down, one shout a stronger. Amen. Amen. Provoked by the faith of men. So, your faith in God, your faith in the word of God, your faith in his messengers are critical. That is what it takes to operate in the supernatural. Faith in God. Tell me faith in God. And faith in his messengers. Hmm. That testifier, that lady came and said, a doctor said something. I came to meet Pastor. I'm going to tell what read to us. And the pastor said, no, go and return with your testimony. That's not a report. Whose report are you believing? Is there the report of doctors? Or a report of your bank statement? No bank statement can make me think I'm poor. Whose report do you believe? My heavenly account is loaded. I can't be deceived by bank statement. Are you believing the school report of your son? Whose report do you believe? Where's your faith? There's no school report that will tell me that my child is a failure. Never. I have a higher report. That the seed of the righteous shall be mighty. So I can't be moved by a school term academic report. Because as I hold on to that one, very soon, from last, it becomes first. That is faith at work. Don't be moved by medical report. So when the doctors tell you you have something, you come to church, your priest, your pastor, your prophet tells you you don't have it. Now, whose report do you believe? They will tell you about facts. The pastor will tell you the truth. Facts are subject to change. Truth changes facts. Amen. There's somebody here. This week, God will surprise you. There's somebody here. This week, you will share tears of joy. Amen. So, forget about contrary report to the truth. Miracles are triggered by the des deliberate faith of men. Don't live your life to chance. You have no chance. So, believe what you are hearing in church. Believe what you are hearing from the word of God. Don't be moved by media reports. And you begin to manifest the supernatural. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. Say, me, it's my turn. It's my turn. I'm not hearing somebody right now. Now, also very important, to operate in the supernatural, number one, faith. Number two, be committed to spiritual growth and development. Be committed to what? Because what we are doing this month is to train up in the supernatural. Every child of God is a candidate to operate the supernatural. And operating the supernatural is like flying into space. If you don't need training to crawl, do you need training to crawl? It's natural. You don't need much training to walk. You may need certain training to be a winner in marathon. But to be a pilot, we need training. Am I correct? A commercial aircraft to fly it, you need training. Now, to now fly into space, it will need what? Higher dimension of. So, operating out of this world, order of results, in your health, in your finance, in your family. You need higher dimension of training. So what you are doing this month is to give us spiritual training. 
We said number one is faith. Number two is commitment to spiritual growth and what? And development. Any child of God that remains a baby will not see the supernatural. Authority and power to manifest the supernatural is only given to those who are grown up. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Today is somebody's day. Amen. He said, the heir, as long as he's a child, the heir is the one who, is, who has the right, the entitlement to the throne. Am I correct? As long as he remains a child, not grown, not developed, different nothing from a servant, even though he's Lord of all. Now, for instance, now, in the UK, we have the prince. Now, when they give out to the prince, maybe at the age of four, the prince will have a nanny because he's a baby. If, if the father is not around, you look at look left. Stop doing that. The nanny can beat a, that's a king he's beating. Because he's still a what? A baby, a child. Now, by the time that prince, a child, now grows up, can any nanny beat? He said, but that heir, who is a prince, is under tutors, under nannies, under governors, until the time appointed. The time appointed is when a child has become a son. He said, unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is what? Given. He said, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Government is entrusted to adults, not to babies. Authority, dominion, the supernatural, we only manifest to those who have grown up. That's why Jesus himself had to grow up. He was born of the Holy Ghost. But for 30 years, he was growing. When the Bible says he grew and was strong in the spirit, he was growing physically, he was also growing spiritually. Many people are only growing by age. They are not growing in the spirit. How many things are under your command is determined by your spiritual growth. The centurion said, I am a man under authority. I said to this, go. He goes. So if you are not under authority, you can't be lord over things. Commitment to spiritual growth and development. Spiritual maturity is not about age, but about depth in spiritual things. About what? The deeper your depth, the greater your rise. Hmm. Job 32, verse 7 and 8. He said, they should speak. Yes, should speak. But we are talking about understanding. Maturity is a function of what? Understanding. Spiritual understanding. So, how do I grow spiritually? How do I change level and change rank spiritually? How do I grow, for instance, that no witch can attack me? How do I get to the point where I leave this world as if Satan has died? I tell you, I don't have dreams. You can live as if Satan has died. It's of no consequence to your life. A lot of believers even praying about Satan. Satan is nothing. If you grow up, he said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? What's your rank? Satan knows your rank. So it's time to grow up. Say me, it's time to grow up. How do I do that? Two things quickly, we have to close. Number one is through the study of the world. Through what? Feeding on the word. He says, study to show yourself approved to God. A workman that need not be ashamed. 
He said, how God approved, how God did what? Approved Jesus Christ with signs and wonders. Do you want to be seeing signs and wonders? Then study. Jesus, the living word, had to study. He was sitting down at the feet of the doctors of his days. Studying is not a gift of the spirit. It requires discipline. What is that area you want to manifest the supernatural? Study. About your marital life, study. About your finances, study. About your health, study. Now, how does it happen? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, every time you are receiving the word of God, divine nature is being transmitted. Look at verse 4. He said, by these precious promises, ye might become partakers of divine nature. As you are reading the word, the nature of God is being transmitted unto us. John 10, 35. He said, he called them gods unto whom the word has come. The word has entered your spirit man. Even when you are sleeping, the word is there. So, but if you are word empty, nothing will happen. So it's time to be inoculated with God's word. Not just hearing God's word. Hearing is different from studying. Reading is different from studying. The difference between reading and studying is no taking. What have you found? Not what have you heard. Personally, about that area you want to live above the world, above human limitations. It's time to leave this natural realm. Things will be getting tough and rough in the natural realm. Yes. Only those who imbibe the nature of God will live above them. They will be operating as gods on the heart. That's the will of God. So when we come to church, what we are doing is to have time to be injected with the nature of God. So everybody has different levels of divine content. Some have 10%, some have 20%, some have 30%, some have 0.1%. That you might become partakers of divine nature. You know the story of Paul? A venomous beast fastened itself to his hand and he shook the beast into the fire. And they looked at him. He should have fallen down. Said they changed their mind. This one is a God. Divine nature. Whatever is hurting others from now will excuse you. Amen. If you are down on shout, a stronger. Amen. amen. Number two, spiritual growth and development. Is to engage the word. Is to do what? So it's not enough to hear the word, study the word. Put that word to practice. Let the word determine your dispositions in life. Let the word determine your attitude, your thoughts, your actions, your words. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, he said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I grew up, I became a man, I did what? I put away childish things. So, your spiritual dispositions how you respond to issues is what authenticate whether you are a child or you are mature. It's not how long you have been in church. I put away childish things, and that's a product of spiritual understanding. Look at it. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse. 20. He said, brethren, be not what? Be not children in understanding. Somebody can be born again 20 years ago, 40 years ago, and still be manifesting childlike understanding, childlike dispositions. 
He said, how be it in malice, for instance, be like children. But in understanding, be what? Put away childish sins. For instance, for a person to be keeping malice, you can be 60 year old, 70 year old, or born again 30 years ago. If you are keeping malice, what are you? Kindergarten. Under tutors. Even though you are a prince, you will still be giving you pampas. They are giving you feeding bottle. They call it SMA Go. What type of food do they give children here? What type of food do you give them here? What do you call it? Eh? Serila. Sima. Okay, you know what he's talking about. <laughs> they are still giving you with the bottle. You are keeping quarrels with your spouse. You are a baby. It's not by title. It's not by what you do in church. You are keeping malice with people in your service unit. Some are even fighting their pastors. When I was a child, I behaved like a child. But when I became a man, in marriage, there are many babies. 30 years in marriage with grown up children, but they are still babies. The wife did something against them or they didn't like. Instead of uh, resolving the issue, I will not eat. <laughs> now, he has left fighting the wife and now fighting food. <laughs> Is that one wise? Even if your wife has obeyed you, this food, I will eat it first. If there are other matters, we'll settle it later. Am I communicating at all? He said, in understanding, be man, grow up. For you to be insulting your spouse shows you're a baby. Because two of you have become one. If you say your, 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 your wife is stupid, you are Mr. John stupid, and your wife is Mrs. John stupid. Because what God has joined together let no stupidity. <laughs> it will affect your disposition. That's what I'm saying. It's a new day for somebody here. Yeah. Say me, I will grow up. I will grow up. For you to be coming to church and you are not serving God. You have been in church now for how many months? Six months? One year? They say, oh, uh, outreach. Prayer. And they ask when they join the church. I joined this church. Ah, in fact, the month before Bishop Wedipo received the vision. <laughs> so it's not what you say, it's what you do. He said, who oh, by reason of use are put the word to work. That's maturity. It's a new day for somebody here. Yeah. That unwanted situation is over today. Yeah. That shame is over today. Yeah. That stagnation is over today. Amen. That pain is over today. Amen. Somebody is free here today. Amen. If you are down one, shout a stronger amen. amen. I say, if you are down one, shout a stronger yet amen. amen. Now remember, it's our enough, it's enough service. We must recognize that every affliction of long continuance is a manifestation of the curse of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 59. Any unwanted situation that has stayed beyond a moment, a while, is not of God. It's illegal. Anything bringing tears, bringing shame, is not of God. Stagnation is not of God. He said the path of the just is a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. So it can't be moving in circles year in, year out. It's not of God. Poverty is not the will of God. Sickness is not the will of God. Rejection, repeated ones, is not the will of God. All of that is over today. Amen. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So nothing unwanted should remain beyond a while. I thought you were saying amen to that. Suffering beyond a day or a while or a moment is contrary to our rights. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Second 
Say, now is the accepted time. Today is somebody's day of salvation. Yeah. Today is somebody's day of turnaround. Yeah. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, he said, after you have suffered for how long? How long is a while? Short. So, for somebody to be jobless for a long time, it's illegal. That illegality, I curse it here today in the name of Jesus. For somebody to be having pain for more than a day, it's illegal. That depression is illegal. That high blood pressure is illegal. That discomfort is illegal. After you have suffered a while, it will say to you, Amen. today is somebody's day of settlement. Amen. In Psalm 30 verse 5, it said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So every weeping, every shame that is beyond one night is illegal. In your seated position, raise your voice now, bring out your paper under you, and say this thing, you are beyond one night. So therefore, you are contrary to the will of God. And whatever my heavenly father has not planted, today enough is enough. Raise your voice and speak to it right now. Enough is enough. This matter over your spiritual life, over your career, over your business, enough, enough. No more weeping behind closed door for me. No more weeping behind closed door. Today is my day. Enough is enough. A new chapter is open today. My captivity is turned today. God is filling my mouth with laughter today. My dreams are becoming a reality. Ha, la rote kleko toleba. Yen glo tole prata leba yam prakatale. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name. As I round up, what does it take to take delivery of our enough is enough verdict from God? Number one, enter into a covenant to serve God as a way of life, and God will give you rest roundabout. Don't serve God only because of ritual. Let it be a lifestyle. We are created to serve him. Miracles happen naturally for those who serve God. He said these signs shall follow them. They don't sit down with people. They follow those who are serving him. Serve God with your time. Serve God with your energy. Make God a priority. Don't put church as a side subject in your life. Put God as you can't. Don't stop playing God out of position. What did I say? For those who are familiar with football, for instance, now there is a man they call either Lionel Messi or Ronaldo. They are strikers. They call them strikers. Now, if you now put somebody as a striker and make him a goalkeeper. What will happen to your team? You are going to lose. You have put basket there. You have played him out of position. His best position is where? In front. To now take him out of front and now put him in the goal post. You just be conceding goals. So if God is not number one, you are playing him out of position. And that's the plague of many Christians. They put God last. Okay, in my spare time. I will have time for kingdom and right prayers. Um, I'm always busy, pastor. All this outreach normally call. You know, I'm a very busy person. You now I'm working there. I'm working with a what bank? What bank? IMF. Well done. Stop putting God out of position. He wants to do many things, but you limit him. When you make him number two, when you make him number three, with your time, with your energy. In your financial matters. See, I will serve God. Number two. Engage in violent cry of faith after the order of Bartimaeus. You are serving if you are not seeing what you want. Cry out. But you may say, enough is enough. I am tired of staying or belonging to association of blind people. Association of beggars. I'm tired. 
I don't want people to be leading me. I want to go anywhere by myself. I want to hang a living by myself to take care of others. Today, not today. Jesus! He cried out and God heard. That same God will hear you today. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. Raise your voice and begin to declare. Today, enough is enough. Supernaturally, every unwanted thing disappeared today. My day of joy has come. My night of weeping is over. Raise your voice in that area over my health, over my children, over my future. My night of weeping is over. My day of joy is here. My day of joy is here. Raise your voice and speak right now. Raise your voice. He said the strangers will hear your voice. They will come out of their hiding places. That situation is waiting for your voice. It's waiting for your command. It's waiting for your voice. It's waiting for your command. It's waiting for your voice. They will come out of their hiding places. This is my day. <laughs> my captivity is torn. The pain is over. The shame is over. The frustration is over. It's my year of fortune. I can't be a victim of misfortune. I can't be a victim of rejection, of denial, of delays. From today, no more delay. From today, no more disappointment. From today, I'm enjoying supernatural speed. Supernatural speed in faith. Supernatural feet, speed in studying. Thank you, Mary Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hear this. When we talk about supernatural, it's not, about, it's not just about what is done, but the speed at which it is done. Say maybe the speed. speed. For instance, as a student, what natural people, it takes them maybe one week to understand a subject. But when you have supernatural mind, you pick it in 10 minutes. When the supernatural is working in your finances, your annual income will become your monthly tithe. Yeah. That's what they call speed. That's what they call speed. You can't explain it. For somebody, I pray for you. Your annual income will become your monthly tithe. Yeah. Let me tell your neighbor what you have just received now. Announce your new level to your neighbor. My own annual income from today becomes my monthly tithe. I enter into it by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> my speed can't be normal again. My speed has to be supernatural. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Something has happened already. Put your hands together for Jesus. Quickly, as we close the service, very important. All oh, let's bow right now. Except you are born again. Except you have Jesus in your life. Except you become a new creature. Except you accept Christ openly and publicly as your Lord and Savior. You are a natural man. The things that happen to natural men will be happening to you. But today, Jesus is here. He's calling somebody. That I don't want to live a natural life again. I don't want to suffer human limitations. I want to be living a superior life, a better life, an abundant life, a sickness-free life, an oppression-free life, a life free from ups and downs, a life free from setback. There are people here right now, you want your sins forgiven. You want your name written in the book of life. You want a better life. Jesus is calling you right now. Wherever you are, carry your bags, carry your Bible, raise your hand, First of all, raise your hand right now. Wherever you are, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Let me see your hand right now. Now, carry whatever you came to it and start coming here. You have to do it openly. You have to do it publicly. That's number one. Number two, God bless you. You are coming. They are coming already. Keep coming. Keep coming everywhere you are. Keep coming. Number two, you gave your heart to Christ before. But certain things happen. You took back your life. You started living it the way you like. Things are not working. But today, things will start working. So give your heart openly and publicly. Start coming. They are coming already. I thought the church was clapping. Jesus is winning souls. Satan is losing this morning. Jesus is winning. Keep coming. Keep coming. Today is your day. You can't afford to postpone it. Don't say I'll do it tomorrow. You have to do it openly. 
we have to do it publicly. We have to do it openly. We have to do it publicly. Jesus is calling you. Say, come, come. I want to give you rest. Come, come. I want to change your story. Come, come. I want you to live an enviable life. Come, come. Wherever you are. Start coming right now. Start coming right now. I thought you were still clapping for them. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Hold it. Hold it. I will not stop. There are still about four people here. You are standing there. You are looking at me. Something is telling you you are the one he's talking to. But you are still there. You are struggling. Should I go or should I not go? Abba. Enough of suffering now. Keep coming. Start coming right now. Keep coming. I thought you are crying. They are coming now. They are coming. I thought you are clapping for these sincere people. What God hates is hypocrisy. What God hates is hypocrisy. The Lord honor you. The Lord honor you. There are still about two more. Two more. We are still there. I'm expecting you. Start coming right now. Tomorrow may be too late for you. Today is your day. Today, today, not tomorrow. Keep coming. If you are coming, come and join us right now. Come and join us right now. All of us in front. Church, please get seated. And while I'm praying with them, you'll be speaking. Father, as I partake of the communion, let so, so, and so happen for me while I'm praying with them. Please place your right hand over your chest and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you died for my sins. You arose the third day. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And now I know I am born again. Amen. Now let me pray with the Father. Let your blood answer for them. Write their names in the book of life. Every evil of this world will never be traceable to you again. From today, every unwanted situation becomes a testimony for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. You cannot be cursed again. Amen. Everything begins to work in your favor. Amen. In Jesus' name. Open your eyes. I want to say that we love you for your sincerity. God will decorate you. Amen. This week, you will shed tears of joy. Amen. Whatever you have been expecting, this week, God will give it to you. Amen. There are some of you, you will stand here next Sunday to share your testimony. Amen. But to help us grow spiritually, because if you are not growing, you'll be groaning. Our officials will meet with us. They will tell us to attend foundation school and other matters. It's very, very critical. You have to feed your spirit, man. Please look to my right now and follow these covenant friends. I thought the church is clapping for Jesus for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let's stand to our feet. Please bring out your list. Enough is enough list. Stretch it toward this altar right now. Stretch it toward the altar of this commission. This liberation altar. God showed the servant. He said a great house fell from heaven. And when that house landed on the heart, it broke into splinter houses. And he said the same fire in the center is burning at the splinter houses. Now, every grace at work on the altar of Peter Banaku, they are here this morning. Amen. I said they are here this morning. Amen. Now, stretch it toward this altar right now. Now, as a saint partaker with the undertaker, I decree a flow from this liberation altar to turn every item on that list into testimonies. Yeah. Over these matters, you will testify. Yeah. Over these matters, you will shed tears of joy. Yeah. Weeping behind closed door is over today. Yeah. Pain, affliction, Shame is finally over today. Amen. Joblessness is over today. Amen. Spiritual carelessness is over today. Amen. Keeping of malice is over today. Amen. Behaving like a child is over today. Amen. Receive your healing right now. Amen. Receive your blessing right now. Amen. Receive your fortune package right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wave it to him and say, thank you, Father. Thank you. Say, may the battle is over. The battle is over. Now the battle is over. over. Shout your mother, now the battle is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we take the communion. Let the stewards come very quickly. The choir will sing shortly. All the tables are hereby blessed. Amen. The bread becomes the flesh of Christ. 
It's a supernatural meal that will tap. It is anti weakness. Say me anti weakness. It is anti sickness. Say me anti sickness. And it is anti death. Say me anti death. By this communion, all the tables are sanctified already. As you partake of it, weakness is over. Amen. Spiritual weakness is over. Amen. Emotional weakness is over. Amen. Bodily weakness is over. Amen. Financial weakness is over. Amen. Career weakness is over. Amen. By this communion today, health and vitality becomes your portion. Amen. The tendency and the residency of pain, of disease, of affliction in your body is terminated by this communion. As we partake of this communion today, whatever want to lead to death, every seed of death, everything that want to culminate in untimely death, as we partake of this one today, life replaces death. Every dying organ bounces back to perfection. Yeah. By this communion, high blood pressure is over. Yeah. Diabetes is over. Yeah. Asthma is over. Yeah. Hypertension is over. Yeah. Neurological diseases are over. Yeah. Reproductive related diseases are over. Yeah. Memory loss is over. Yeah. Forgetfulness is over. Amen. Dementia is destroyed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is done. Amen. Come on, let's go, choir. Let's go, everybody. It's over. I am more than a conqueror. Come on, let's sing it now. Now that the sing it prophetically right now. Come on.
but the battle is over is how you are shouting, how you are jumping, how you are jubilating. Hear me, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Now that the battle is over. Is that how you sing it? Now to show that the battle is over and that every day of this week is your testimony. You are going to shout, you jump, you move your hand, you just make the devil mad. Shout hallelujah! This is your week already. I said, This is your week already. I said, This is your week already. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God forevermore. Now, we heard earlier on that God is lifted and promoted.